Oh, this is a very good question. Um, so in the field of material science, uh, we do four things. We design and uh, produce uh, materials for uh, use by mankind. Uh, these are materials which are not found uh, naturally on, on Earth. So for example, we have to prepare metals or uh, polymers or uh, for example also semiconductor materials or technical ceramics none of these materials can be found in the uh, natural world we have to prepare them using uh, energy and production methods um, so this is one topic uh, second topic is we um, learn how to process these materials into useful components for uh, mankind uh, to employ. Um, the third point is that we often study um, how those uh, materials and components uh, perform in their service environment. So we can think about uh, components such as uh, solar cells or electric cars or uh, aircraft and their uh, fuselages, the wings and so forth or maybe also next generation of uh, uh, electric motors that require turbo generators and so forth. And then the final part is that we use um, uh, modern characterization methods to uh, understand better the way in which the um, uh, atoms and electrons are arranged so that we can better understand the science and theory of, uh, of, of materials. And uh, in Shimano University, we have a lot of uh, very unique uh, facilities, including uh, transmission electron microscopy, mechanical testing behavior, uh, testing devices, and so on uh, for doing uh, these uh, things. So there are four points. There is the design of new materials, the processing, uh, the studies of the performance in service, and then the characterization. These are the four important elements of material science uh, and, uh, and engineering. I hope this is useful for us. Well, hello, I'm Catherine Ray. I'm Professor of Super Alloys at Cambridge University. And I'm very honoured to be linked to the new School of Materials and Energy at Shimane University. Materials are critical to so many of the technologies being developed to reduce and replace fossil fuels and to tackle climate change. For example, developing new photovoltaic devices that can generate power from the sun at higher efficiencies and that cost less and can be integrated into buildings and other structures. Or improved steels for the bearings in wind turbines or more powerful uh, magnets for their motors. Or indeed devices that can use less power for digital or cloud storage centres. All these technologies and many others such as my own field of high efficiency aero engines are limited by the material challenges that they face. There are some great careers in materials and my own students are working in many leading roles after they've left the university. For instance, Aya Suzuki came from Japan to do her PhD with me and is now a leading expert for EDF Power, uh, a power generation company uh, and she's involved in developing advanced modular reactors. These are small nuclear reactors, which we hope will be much safer uh, than, than the larger uh, nuclear reactors. Another woman, Caroline Goddard, is chief materials engineer in Reaction Engines, a company developing rocket propulsion systems for scientific research and private business. And yet another, this time a man, is Olivier Messe, he's from France, and he's heading the additive manufacturing or 3D printing of metals for a leading German company, Ehrlichen. These are just three examples of the, the kind of exciting careers that, that, that students of materials can get into. Worldwide, materials engineers are in great demand to apply leading edge research to some of our most difficult challenges. There are some fantastic opportunities for young people with creativity, imagination and the scientific skills to make these a reality. 
And I think the course at Shimano that they're developing and starting this April is a great way to start. Thank you. I think in Shimano University, we need to study um, the importance of materials for modern energy uh, production. So traditionally, um, our society has relied upon carbon uh, fuel, fossil fuels for energy production, emphasizing uh, strongly coal and uh, wood and gas. Um, and we know now from the science that uh, uh, around the world, this is contributing to a rise in CO2 levels in the atmosphere and hence uh, global warming, which is leading to uh, problems with regard to weather systems and uh, the like. So we have to address the grand challenge for uh, this new century, which is to make um, uh, zero carbon uh, energy production methods and I think this is going to require uh, a number of uh, different technologies which Himani University should uh, emphasize. Uh, for example, uh, wind turbines where we can produce uh, energy from, uh, from wind, maybe also uh, from, from, from waves. So here we need to have um, materials for composite blades, uh, for structural foundations based on concrete and steel. Uh, and then also um, new kinds of motors and generators for generating uh, power. Uh, I think solar power is also important. So here uh, we need um, photovoltaic materials based upon uh, silicon. We shouldn't forget also nuclear power, um, attack potentially also small modular reactors. And of course there is a lot of emphasis on not just uh, fission, but also fusion which by 2050 could uh, revolutionize completely the production of uh, energy. So there are many people around the world who uh, are working strongly uh, to produce um, uh, prototype fusion uh, reactors. We have to transition from the carbon economy to the hydrogen economy. Uh, so therefore we have challenges related to uh, electrolysis of water because we want the hydrogen to be green. Uh, and produced from uh, zero carbon uh, electricity. Um, we have to find ways to store the hydrogen and also transport it from site to site. Uh, and we know that hydrogen is a very tricky material to, uh, to, uh, to store and transport. I think also Shimano University has a big opportunity with regard to materials such as uh, batteries and uh, fuel cells. At the moment, we rely very heavily on uh, lithium ion uh, batteries uh, for cars and for uh, electrification of, uh, of flight. But we need to make these batteries lighter because they are very heavy and uh, they need to have uh, uh, better energy uh, density. So new kinds of batteries and fuel cells and turbo generators are needed for the uh, more uh, electric um, uh, economy. And then of course we need to think about more efficient use of power. So for example, uh, insulation of uh, buildings so that we can retain heat uh, better uh, and then also the better means of uh, providing uh, um, lighting for example using uh, solid state uh, lighting these are the areas in my opinion which are very important and uh, Shimano University should aim to be um, one of the world leaders for these kind of technologies uh, for, the, for the modern age and I think with the uh, uh, international collaboration and uh, the best faculty and uh, very nice um, um, buildings and equipment, we can uh, face these challenges together to learn and design these new um, materials and structures for a carbon-free economy. So I hope uh, this is the, uh, um, the, uh, the correct direction uh, for us. Thank you very much. Arika Dorgzemas. Uh, this is a great time for material science. It's really becoming uh, a critical technology in so many areas uh, and uh, working together in, in the most uh, recent developments, the most cutting edge developments, I think uh, material scientists can make a huge impact on uh, uh, the, the critical technologies that we have at the moment.
So good luck to you all, um, and, and, and I hope very much that, that I can help uh, develop the faculty and uh, bring what skills I have to, to, to help you uh, develop um, both the way that you teach, but also the way that you interact with researchers internationally. Lead 教授、大教授、材料エネルギー学部への期待と励ましとメッセージありがとうございました。材料エネルギー学部はさまざまな特徴を持ったチャレンジングな学部です。まず入学定員が80名と、おそらく全国で一番小さい工学部だと思います。専門領域は材料工学に特化しています。そして情報科学、インフォマティックスを教育。研究の基盤に置いています小さいながら材料工学から世界的なエネルギー課題の解決を目指すと非常に大きな目的を掲げていますそして特化した専門領域で国内外に突き出た学部を目指しています教育では自らの興味関心に基づく学びを達成するためにアントレプレーナーシップ教育を4年間を通して実施しますまた、オックスフォード大学、ケンブリッジ大学、ヘルシンキ大学などの海外大学と連携した授業や、海外研修も大きな魅力の一つです。小さい学部であるからこそ、先生方や学生同士の交流も活発にできます。材料は身近ですが、意識されにくい存在です。しかし、製品の性能を飛躍的に向上させるには、新素材、新材料の開発が鍵であり材料はまさしく社会のゲームチェンジャーです皆さんには材料エネルギー学部で学び社会のゲームチェンジャーになっていただくことを期待します高い意欲を持った皆さんのご入学をお待ちしています<音楽>